Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today I'm going to go ahead and make some little round luggages out of these little pill containers. I've really been on a roll ever since I made those binder clip bags. But don't worry, I'm still working on the wedding, but I just had to get this idea out of my head. So I've been saving these little round containers for quite some time and they always look like little miniature luggage to me. Now I started off by cutting off the tabs that made the containers really easy to open. Now that I've removed the easy open tabs, I'm wondering if that was a good idea. And now I'm going to go ahead and add some Mod Podge as my adhesive and add the fabric. Now dolls, I used the Mod Podge, but tacky glue would have worked just as well. If you don't have Mod Podge, just apply a very thin layer of tacky glue. Just make sure it's smooth with no lumps. And it's always a best practice to sand the surface when you're trying to apply something like this to make it stick better or give it better adhesion. But I didn't, dolls. Now here I am. I just went ahead and added the fabric. I chose this really nice piece of brown plaid. I really have a thing for plaids. Now I know they're all different types of plaids, but this particular brown plaid looks masculine to me. So I'm on a quest to have a nice assortment of men's accessories, including luggage, throughout the dollhouses to match the amount of men I have in my dollhouse community. <laughs> now I really like the Mod Podge on my hard luggage because it seals the fabric, helps it to resist any kind of dirt or staining, and the, as long as you use the matte Mod Podge, it doesn't look shiny. Now, if you do want your finish to be shiny or even patent looking, I would suggest you use the Mod Podge in the satin or high gloss finish. Now, when I had fully covered my little round luggage with the fabric, I tried to straighten out the plaids to line it up. I really wasn't that successful, but when I got it in a position I was satisfied with, I did add a rubber band to hold it down while it dried so it would be a nice, tight fit around the edges or the rim of the circle. So while I was in the throes of making all types of other luggage and my Mod Podge was out, I had this other plastic container that always reminded me of a suitcase as well. So I did the exact same treatment on it. I didn't have to worry about rounding it around the edges. I was able to just put the fabric on flat and smooth it around the corners the same way that I did my wooden suitcases that I made in some earlier videos on the channel. I will put a link in the description so you can see how I created those. But the fabric covering technique is exactly the same. And again, you just lay it smooth, almost like you're wrapping a gift. Now this is a project you will definitely need to take your time with and make sure that the fabric seals all the way around. So I would suggest you do each piece or each part separately just to make sure you're getting a nice, tight, smooth fit because you don't want it to look lumpy because that will really disrupt the realism. And it's just really a better practice to just take your time and really give it your best shot that even if it doesn't come out perfect, you know you did your best. And then the next time around when you try it again, you'll know what mistakes you made. But if you rush through, sometimes you go through it so fast, you don't know what you did right or wrong. Now here I'm nipping it around the part where I want to put the handle. I'm just putting little snips in it so that I'll be able to turn it down onto the inside of the luggage because you don't want to cut it off flush around the edges because it'll make it really difficult to finish. Now I am using some extra Mod Podge to kind of mush it along the edges so that those edges will be smooth. And you can see what I mean now, dolls. You can see how folding those edges of the fabric inside the bag really alleviate the problem or the need to add additional trim. So this thin piece of fabric covers the gap where the bag folds. Now you see me just adding the little piece. Now, if you do stripes or plaids, take the time to really line the lines up evenly. Make them match because that's one of the marks of a well-made piece when all the lines match up. <laughs> now here you see me adding a little trim piece as a finishing to ensure that I camouflage the possibility of gapping between the top and the bottom of the little suitcase. So here I'm going to show you really quick how I made this. So I cut a really thin piece of fabric as thin as you can get it where it'll be just big enough for you to fold down. And I fold over one side toward the center. And after I folded that side, I fold the other piece on top of that. And then you end up with this really teeny skinny 
finishing piece, which I like to use for so many different things like shoulder straps, suspenders, and even belts. It takes a little practice to make them, but it'll be worth it. It's really good for covering seams and making things look complete. And it's also a great remedy for gaps. Now, while that was drying, I went back to the suitcase and went ahead and added the lining. Now, when it comes to the linings inside my trunks and suitcases, many times I use wallpaper and I tend to save the scraps from wallpaper that I like. And I also utilize wallpaper that I'm not that fond of. Now, this wallpaper is pretty plain and Although I did use it in one of the rooms in the rooming house, I really wasn't that happy with it. And so I think it's really perfect for using inside of suitcases and trunks because it almost looks like cotton ticking. And it's a good weight and it holds up really well. And after I lined the inside of the suitcase, I trimmed it off really carefully with my craft knife. And after I trimmed it off where it was flush with the edge of the container, I did use a little extra glue to get in between the wallpaper and the inside to make sure all the edges of the inside were sealed in. So take time to, you know, check for those little details and small things that you may have missed in the process of lining the piece. And you see how I'm just kind of peeling back that little edge and just adding a little bit of my tacky glue to make sure it's secured down. Now, after I made sure the main body of the inside of the suitcase was done, I took time to cut pieces for the edges. And you see here, I'm adding my tacky glue on those inside panels and then smoothing it out really smoothly and evenly along that whole piece to make sure it's sealed down nice and flat. And then I simply add one of the little cut pieces that I prepared and fit it in there nice and neatly. Smooth it out, make sure it seals all the way down so there's no gapping, and allow it to dry. Now here I am back with the little circle luggages. Now I did add fabric, but I wasn't completely satisfied. And I was comfortable with the blue and white stripe, but I really didn't like the brown herringbone. So I removed the fabric and used brown striped wallpaper. Now, now this is the same wallpaper I actually used on the walls of the rooming house music room. And after I got the circles cut, I did cut strips to go around the edges to cover up all the orange on the inside. And I really feel like the paper was a lot easier to control and it looked a lot neater. And after I got the inside done, I went ahead and added a pocket. And I'm leaving this here, dolls, just so you can see that there's more than one way to finish a miniature. Now in this next portion of the video, I'm just going to allow you to watch me play. Now now this is your opportunity to really get creative. There is no right or wrong way to do this. Have fun with your nail art and allow your imagination to be free. I kind of went from one thing to another just trying to determine what I really liked and what really gave me the right feel. And anytime I ran into a problem where I wasn't sure, I went on to work on something that I had already made a solid decision about, like the strap or the handle. Now you can see from this angle that I used part of that skinny that I used for the finishing to make a little handle. And now I'm adding some of the gold studs to be like rivets to make it look as though that's what's holding the handle on the bag. After fitting the strap or handle onto this bag, I suddenly got a new idea for the second bag, so I started working on that. So I added a really thin piece of brown satin ribbon all the way around the perimeter of the bag, and then after using studs and hoops to make what would look like a closure, then I began to space out a series of gold nail art studs around the perimeter of the bag on top of the brown satin ribbon so it'll look like rivets. Now I'm really pleased with the way these little bags turned out and I do see where there's definitely room for improvement, but after they're filled and dressed, no one will notice all the tiny flaws. Now dolls, if you wanna see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I sure have enjoyed creating this video for you dolls and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.